Hello and welcome to the online edition of Night Watch for January 2025. My name is Bill coming to you from the Sudicum Planetarium here at Adventure Science Center in Nashville. And as always, we'll start off with the moon phases this month. We find the moon will be at first quarter on the 6th, full moon on the 13th, last quarter moon on the 21st, and new moon on the 29th. Looking at planets this month, we find the planet Venus continues to reside in the southwest at sunset and appears extremely bright. It is the brightest star-like object in that part of the sky and very easy to see. Watch as the beautiful thin crescent moon will be passing to the upper left of Venus on January 3rd. Saturn is to the upper left of Venus in early January and appears as a yellowish or cream colored star-like object. But due to planetary motion, Saturn will appear to shift and get below the planet Venus by the end of the month. Watch as Venus and Saturn appear to pass by each other during mid-January. The thin crescent moon will be passing near the planet Saturn on January 4th and 31st. And watch as Venus and Saturn pass by each other very close on the 17th. Jupiter is high in the evening sky and appears as a bright white star-like object nearly overhead in mid-evening. We find that Jupiter resides in the constellation Taurus the Bull near the orange star Aldebaran which marks the eye of the bull. The gibbous moon will be passing above the planet Jupiter on the 10th. Mars rises in the eastern sky in early evening right around sunset and appears reddish and is near the twin stars Castor and Pollux of the constellation Gemini the Twins. Mars will also be at opposition this month between the 12th and the 16th rising at sunset and will be at its closest approach to Earth for the next two years at a distance of 59.7 million miles away on the 12th. The full moon will be very close on the 13th. In fact, it will be so close, there will be a lunar occultation. That means the moon will pass in front of the planet Mars for just a little over an hour. In the central time zone, like Nashville, the moon will pass in front of the planet Mars between about 8.02 p.m. and 9.10 p.m. Central Standard Time. So Mars will temporarily be blocked by the moon and not visible. You can watch this occultation with just your eyes, but a pair of binoculars or a telescope will give you a closer view. As the moon glides in front of the red planet, and in our simulated view, it looks like the moon is getting lower in the sky, but we have to remember we're centering on the planet Mars. So as the Earth turns, both the moon and Mars are actually rising. Now, both Mars and the moon are rising high in the east, so this occultation again starts at around 8.02 p.m. and then it will be over by around 9.10 p.m. with Mars coming out the other side. This occultation shows you the motion of the moon as it orbits around the Earth in just over an hour. At the time of the occultation, the moon is about 235,500 miles away, while Mars is almost 60 million miles away. Looking at constellations this month, we find that Taurus the Bull is up high and as previously mentioned is also the home for the planet Jupiter during this period. Look for the beautiful Pleiades star cluster on the shoulder of Taurus the Bull. With your eyes, you'll probably only count about four or five stars under light polluted conditions. But with a pair of binoculars or a telescope, you will see well over a hundred stars in this one little spot in the sky. Orion is the mighty hunter of the winter sky, rising up in the east, and we can notice the seven bright stars that mark the outline of his body, making Orion an easy constellation to identify. The bright orange-red star Betelgeuse in his shoulder, which we see on the upper left-hand side, is a supermassive red giant star. It's also a star that's nearing the end of its life and could blow up in a spectacular supernova explosion anytime over the next million years or so. We don't know exactly when Betelgeuse will blow up, but if it happens during our lifetime, it could be spectacular, and it could be within the next few thousand years. The bluish star in Orion's left leg, which we see on the right side, 
is Rigel. Making a diagonal line from Rigel up to Betelgeuse will take you into the constellation Gemini, the Twins. The Twins are to the upper left of Orion and are marked by the twin stars Castor and Pollux in their heads. While they look about equal in brightness, they are slightly different in color. Castor is more of a bluish color, while Pollux is more of an orange-yellow color. Can you see the difference in the real sky? And during January and February this year, Mars will be moving across the constellation Gemini on its retrograde loop that started late last year. Auriga, the charioteer, rides high above Orion and between Gemini and Taurus. Look for the bright star Capella nearly overhead that marks the mother goat star in the constellation of Auriga. The mother goat is riding along with Auriga in his chariot. Take the three belt stars of Orion and go down to the lower left to find the brightest star in the nighttime sky, Sirius, which is also the brightest star in the constellation Canis Major, Orion's great dog. Sirius is the brightest star in the night sky because the brightest star in the sky is, of course, the sun, which gives us daytime. Between Gemini and Canis Major, the great dog, is Orion's little dog, marked by the bright star Procyon. The constellation is only marked by two stars, so maybe they were thinking more of a hot dog. Now, if you can't remember everything I've mentioned in this online edition of Nightwatch, check out our online star charts, which you can download from our planetarium pages. Check out adventuresci.org slash starcharts, and you can get a new star chart every month to follow along with what's currently in the nighttime sky. And don't forget to come visit us here at the Planetarium at Adventure Science Center for our regular planetarium shows and other events here at Adventure Science Center. Check out the website adventuresci.org for more information. And we hope you can visit us here where our mission is to open every mind to the wonders of science and technology, fostering a better understanding of ourselves and the world around us. And until next time, I wish you clear skies.